Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. President Jacob Zuma placed the economy at the center of his State of the Nation address this week. Terence Kramer joins me to reflect on some of the priorities outlined. Hi Terence. Hi. The president acknowledged the fact that the economy's current um, situation was self-induced. Why do you think this is important? Well, I think up until now, since the financial crisis, which evolved into the global Great Recession, uh, South Africa's always pointed to external factors as being the drag on the economy. So its major trading partners weren't performing, especially in Europe. Um, there was that commodity pullback after 2008, 2009, which affected uh, the way we, uh, you know, the sort of our terms of trade, and we went into recession in 2009. And generally, we've had these headwinds that have been external. But all along, people have been warning that they're also domestic headwinds. And that hasn't been an emphasis or given emphasis um, by government. It's always been pointing to the, the external uh, factors. And I think that this week, it was an important uh, transitionary week in the sense that, you know, first we saw uh, the Reserve Bank governor saying that a lot of the problems and the woes of, in the economy are self-inflicted. And then that was sort of built on in the state of a nation by President Jacob Zuma, who alluded to, I think, the two key uh, mega issues of labor volatility, especially in the mining sector, and the electricity shortages that South Africa have as two key structural problems in this economy that are weighing down, um, uh, weighing down our growth prospects. And I think it's you know, the, the first step, you know, acknowledging that these are things that are in your hands that aren't external to yourself, something that you can maybe do something about. I think it is empowering and it's important that we start acknowledging uh, what the real uh, issues are. And do you think the right targets have been set to remedy the current situation? Well, I think a lot of emphasis was placed <coughs> in the speech around the labor volatility and the protracted strikes. And that's really been, an, uh, we saw in the first quarter, uh, a contraction in, in the economy of 0.6%. And uh, largely that was uh, accounted for by what happened in the platinum sector. And the, pr the protracted nature of a strike, you know, the workers have lost 10 uh, billion rands worth of wages, companies 24 billion, 23 billion rands worth of revenue. It's, 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 these are significant numbers, and it's been dragging down not just that sector, but sectors that supply into it, as well as, you know, the whole confidence around the mining industry uh, specifically, but confidence in this economy as an investment destination. So. Uh, it, uh, it was important that he honed in on that issue, and he did. And I think that, that it wasn't, it was backed up, I mean, it was first an acknowledgement of how bad things are, but it was backed up with some action plan, which was also important, I think. The issue that uh, Ned Lack's going to engage in uh, this trying to rebuild the trust relationship between government, business and labor, led by the Deputy President, Sir Ramaphosa. The fact that uh, President Zuma is taking personal charge of the framework agreement in, uh, in the mining sector and trying to drive some of that, that through. And the emphasis given on sort of mine worker housing and the services around mining communities, I think was also important and it seems to be backed with plans and you have, uh, you know, um, local government now with uh, former finance minister Praveen Gordon, you know, but overseeing that area, have someone with some clout and some understanding. And I think uh, there's more political will to start doing uh, things in these mine, near mine communities to try and uh, deal with uh, the stresses and strains that are being that are now spilt over into uh, into into the strike and into sort of volatility generally in that sector, and then the other big ticket issue uh, being electricity, and the fact that that shortage of electricity is a constraint on growth, and again uh, the transformation of the nuclear committee. It was used to be led by uh, Pre Deputy President Hilem Klante. President Zuma took over recently of that, uh, overseeing that committee, but now really broadening its focus to energy security. I think, uh, you know, having some sort of institutional capacity right next to cabinet, so it's a cabinet subcommittee, which means it should get priority on the cabinet diary when issues of ESKIM or issues of um, the changes to the electricity structure come, before, uh, come up for discussion or for decision making. I think having that proximity is going to be important. So I think, yes, you know, I think the, the right issues have been identified 
and it's now going to be about really using those that capacity and, uh, and getting down to work and implementing. And can you answer perhaps why Zuma has taken on these committees himself and not entrusted Sir Ramaphosa to take them on as he did Montlante? Well, he did take over from Kalema Montlante of the nuclear committee fairly early on. And uh, he has given his deputy charge of the, the NEDLAC related process, which I think is quite an important process. And also it emerged quite clearly that um, uh, Sir Ramaphosa, who was the deputy chair of the National Planning Commission under um, Trevor Manuel, who's now vacated government, uh, is going to take charge of the National Planning Committee as well, even though there is a, a, a minister, or there's only one minister in the presidency now in the form of Jeff Khadebe. Um, that, that uh, important role of the National Planning Commission has gone to the deputy. So I think there is an important sharing of the load. But also, you know, there's, uh, I think, a lot of trust amongst the business community in uh, Ramaphosa's abilities and him giving, being given that important task at NEDLAC as well as at the National Planning Commission, I think, is, is an important signal. But you also need the president to put his own imprimatur on some of these very important things. So he's head of the uh, Presidential Infrastructure Coordinating Commission as well as uh, this energy uh, subcommittee. I, may, I assume that he will stay in charge of that and I think that those are quite important uh, 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 institutional uh, levers that he may be able to influence. And when do you expect some action on the proposed remedies? Well, I think that is the big question. I think we do. I think the right issues have been identified. There's labour volatility and the electricity crisis. And I think, uh, but as we've seen with the trying to resolve this platinum sector strike, it's, it's, not, it's not easy and uh, not all the institutional levers are in place or, uh, you know, does the Labor Relations Act need additional mechanisms? I think it's going to be a highly contested discussion around whether uh, the um, Labor Relations Act should be changed to enforce some sort of arbitration at some point. And uh, that's going to take a long time to get through any, uh, you know, it's not going to have an effect on the current situation. And then there's the whole issue of the electricity supply crisis again. So again, the right targets, and I think the right emphasis and this, uh, this emphasis on transforming the sector into one that's mon much more responsive to South Africa's economic growth, I think is also important. But then there was a, that whole shopping list of uh, technologies that uh, the president pushed out from nuclear and shale gas through to renewables and coal three. And it's not clear to me whether we've really got our mind around the, the next energy plan or the electricity plan and whether all of those fit neatly together, whether some might have to make way for others, whether some might have to be delayed for others. And I think we do need to now get uh, that update of the integrated resource plan endorsed so that there's certainty, there's visibility. We need to sort out this ESKIM financial instability because if we are talking about a coal three and if it is going to have to be done a, as a mega project by ESKIM, it really doesn't have the financial wherewithal to do that at the moment. If we are talking about Eskom being the owner-operator of the nuclear power station fleet, the new one, the 9,000 to 9,600 megawatts, again, there's a financial issue that has to be sorted out. Otherwise, it, um, we are going to have to look for different options. Um, and, you know, this game change, shale gas, first we have to actually know whether it's, the gas exists and th there's still some way to go. So I think, you know, all these uh, uh, remedies... I think the targets, the right boxes, the ticks, the right noises are made, but the devil is really going to be in the detail, and we need to now really knuckle under and get the visibility, especially on the energy plan, and get these strikes behind us. Thanks, Terence. That is the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis.